Like most people everywhere, I've had my wear and tear. What my shock the Western world is, I don't even care. But it's the only way to go. It's the only dream I know. It was one of the amazing stories of show business. The 100 years of Nathan Birnbaum, who began his career at age seven in a children's quartet and as George Burns was still performing until a bathtub fall a year and a half ago. I don't believe in anybody retiring. I don't care what they do for a living. It's nice to be able to get out of bed and love what you're going to do that day. So I'm very fortunate. And um, I can't make any money in bed anyway. At an age when most men were well beyond retirement, if they even reached that number of years, Burns was the center of attention wherever he went. This is your captain speaking. I'm not really a pilot, I'm a country singer. But the he did commercials. He made movies. You bluffed. You had nothing. Why did I fold? I put the fear of me in you. There were six books, and he went out to promote them. He worked in front of college audiences. He talked to youngsters about his life in show business. At 90, he signed a five-year contract with the Las Vegas Hotel, and Burns took delight in exaggerating his longevity. So you entertained the troops in World War I. Look at this. The Civil War II? <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't see you in the picture. Well, I'm in the tent. I'm putting on my makeup. <laughs> no wonder he played God. He's old enough. <laughs> Mr. Some performers are content to get one star on the Hollywood Boulevard Walk of Fame. This was the unveiling of George Burns' third star. And he gave advice when asked or found it necessary. He could be testy with a young television commercial director. You're going to cut to the sale, aren't you? No, it's going to run through the room. We're very wide, George. Well, we have the entire room. If you don't cut to the sale, you got no joke. Or he could be very helpful to another veteran performer. Point to the other lady and say she's the greatest star. And as you're pointing to her, also point to yourself. Say she's the greatest star. And she's the greatest star. They're all great stars. They're the greatest. And you'll steal it, kid. Burns could take an innocent question from a stranger and turn it into a humorous punchline. Can you recommend a, yeah, uh, a good starter you cigar? Can you recommend you a get good... a holder. Right. Then with a holder, you don't need to use an expensive cigar. Okay. Any, all cigars in a holder taste the like. They smell. You know what I mean? Like Milton Berle smokes cigars, he pays two dollars. Yeah. I pay two dollars for a cigar, first I sleep with it. <laughs> You can go on the stage and say, look, I just want to be a mediocre act. I don't want to be a star. And the audience says, oh, no, we want to make you a star. And they make you a star. And, they, and, and if you're a flop, they make you the flop. It's up to the audience. If the audience like you, you do it. They like Gracie, you know. When I worked with Gracie, I was the comedian the first week, the first night. And, and, uh, and Gracie did straight. And they laughed at Gracie's questions, and nobody laughed at my answers. So I switched the act around, you know. Oh, George, that mink coat is just beautiful. <laughs> Glad you like it. Would you ever think that such a beautiful mink coat would come from such an unattractive little thing that looks like a weasel? Oh, George, you're just fishy. You know I think you're handsome. <laughs> Gracie Allen's death in 1964 ended the comedy team and the marriage that had lasted through vaudeville, radio, occasional films, and television. He played it low-key for a decade, and then in 1975, replacing his terminally ill longtime friend Jack Benny in the movie The Sunshine Boys, George Burns won an Oscar as his career took off again. Watching him and Walter Matthau as two old vaudevillians is one of the movie's more delightful moments. Knock, knock, knock. Enter! What do you mean, enter? What happened to come in? I'm trying to freshen up the act. Who asked you to freshen up the act? They asked for the doctor sketch, didn't they? The doctor sketch starts with come in and not enter. You want to freshen up something? Put some flowers in here. I felt Jack would want me to do it. You know, we were, we were very, very close. I knew Jack for 55 years. It's too bad he didn't do this because he'd have been great in it. You know, it was a marvelous part for Jack. 
And, uh, of course, it's a very good part for me, too, you know. It's time for taking it easy. It's time for taking it slow. Old bones don't move so fast like they did once in the past. Now, if I have to run, I simply don't go. But I love life, I'd like to do it again. Though I might not be much more than I've ever been. Just to have the chance to turn back the hands and make my life begin. Oh, yeah. I'd like to do it again. Oh, yeah. I'd like to do it again. Thank you.